Welcome to Calculus. We're going to look at how to do integration with trig. Namely, we're going to use some trig identities to make the process easier for ourselves. So let's just jump right in and start one, shall we? So I'm going to do the integration of sine squared x cosine cubed x dx. Now, remember the dx is important to us. It tells us what we're integrating with respect to. It's our adverb. It tells us what to integrate, what variable to use. If that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to you, and I think I've covered this in other videos, but I'll just re revisit it real quickly here. What it means is if I'm doing 3x squared, the integration of 3x squared dz, notice the variables don't match, right? That means that you're doing 3x squared z, and then plus c, where this entire piece right here, 3x squared, is your coefficient of the z. Okay, so now that's what that dx means, and it's just simply your variable. And we don't necessarily always use x's. We could also use other variables like theta, which is frequently used for trig functions. We could use theta here as well. It doesn't matter. It's always going to be the same and wash out and work the same. Just make sure you keep your variable consistent through your system. All right, so what else do we do then? Well, let's look at how we can do this integration. Let's start with maybe a substitution. So let's let u equal, um, oops, let's let u equal cosine square uh, cubed theta, which means that du is equal to three sine squared theta. No, not squared. I'm sorry, just three sine squared uh, sine theta, and then cosine squared theta. So just three sine theta cosine squared theta. Well, we don't have all that up there. It doesn't give us the sine squared, and it doesn't give us the, it, it actually has too many cosines, so that's not going to work. Let's we'll let u equal cosine of theta, which means that du would be equal to negative sine theta d theta. Well, the, the negative is fine. We can deal with that, which means that now uh, we got the integration of negative u cubed d theta squared. That's what we have, right? Yeah, not theta. I didn't write d theta. It needs to be d th du, pardon me. Right? It needs to be du there. Well, uh, what is du squared? What does that mean? That doesn't have a whole lot of meaning to us. Well, what if we do a integration by parts? Let's let u equal cosine of theta. So du is equal to negative sine of theta. And let's let dw equal the other one, which would be sine. Actually, this has to be squared, doesn't it? Well, this seems like it's going to be really, that has to be cubed. Oh, dear. This is, how do we do that? What is that piece right there? Oh, bother. This, this doesn't seem like this is going to be useful to us. Let's try something else. One thing I do remember is this. This is one of our Pythagorean identities, right? So cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. And I can rewrite that. Might be a little bit more useful to us in this form. Oops, let's try that again, come on. So one minus sine squared theta. All right, there we go. Now, how is that useful? Well, I can take this original one here, and I can write this as sine squared theta, cosine squared theta, cosine theta, d theta. You're like, well, how is that useful? It's just, just expanding it. Yes, but now, if you notice, we have this piece and this piece that match. So now I can do this. All right, so sine theta, and then one minus sine squared theta, and cosine theta. Somebody may be thinking, how does this make it easier? Shouldn't we just stick with integration by parts? That, that seems like that might have been more promising there. Well, just we'll go with me on this, okay? The idea here, the problem we ran into with integration by parts is that we had too many or not enough of, of the sines and the cosines in there. So what, we, what we're trying to do here is set up a scenario where those pieces are suddenly lining up with each other. Okay, so notice here I have a binomial and it's being multiplied on the back end and the front end by two different pieces. So if I go ahead and distribute out my sine squared and my cosine, I end up with sine squared theta cosine theta minus sine to the fourth theta cosine theta. 
Now, some of you are looking at this and thinking, this isn't any easier. We still haven't fixed anything except for one piece. When we pick U to be sine theta now, du is cosine theta d theta, which we have right there without a power. So we can rewrite this. Notice I'm not writing an equal sign. I'm writing an arrow because we're doing u substitution. So we're converting this from one form to another. So now when I do this, u is sine squared, so that's u squared, cosine d theta. So now I'm going to write this as two different ones here. And then minus the integration of u to the fourth du. Now you need to pause and back up if you need to, but there's there's u right there to the fourth power, and here's du, which is cosine d theta. So now I can do these integrations very easily. This is 2u, no it's not, try again, u to the third over 3 minus u to the fifth over 5 plus c, right? And now that I have that actually integrated, now I can go back and I can plug in u. So that becomes sine cubed theta over 3 plus sine to the fifth theta over 5 plus c. Now some of you may have said, where'd that plus sign come from? It came from the fact that I don't know how to write apparently. There we go, it's a minus sign. All right, and there is that integration. And that may, you may look at that and think that looks completely different than the original function that we started with, and the answer is, yeah, it, it does look very different than the original one that's up here. That doesn't mean it's wrong, though. We can rewrite this in a number of different ways based upon what we have right now. We could even factor out an S sine cubed from this, which we don't have to do. I'm just pointing out that we could do that. And when we do that, look what happens. I just want to point this out. Sine cubed theta, right? And when we do that, we end up with one third minus one fifth of sine squared theta, and then the whole thing plus c, right? Now, if you're paying attention, this looks remarkably like a Pythagorean identity. So there's more manipulation we could do here to get turn this into a cosine squared with some other coefficients attached to it, which would not be what we need to do down the road. But right now, this either of these last two lines here, this one or that one, is perfectly acceptable as a final answer. You don't need to do anything else. I'm just pointing out the other things that do, do exist with this. All right, so now we got that one. What else can we do? Let's do another trig problem here because I hear the people in the back asking for more. So here you go. All right, let's say we deal with the integration of 12 cosine squared theta d theta. Now this one looks surprisingly simple, right? So let's just do that integration, except when you integrate something squared, you divide by 2 and you need the, the du in there. And if I let u equal cosine of theta, which is the interior piece, then du is sine of theta. And I, don't, do you, I don't have all that. What the, nah, rawr, growl, right? So what do we do? Okay. Let's look at how else we can write this. Let's think this through for a second and think, well, do we have any trig identities that allow us to rewrite cosine squared theta? So let's think th about what involves a cosine squared theta in it. Okay, so actually I shouldn't use an arrow here. This is just kind of like a think pad over here. All right, let's write down, let's go ahead and write down a couple of formulas and see what we can come up with. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of direct us into the one that is gonna be useful to us on this one for the sake of time, but you can go through your trig uh, identities. You can just do a Google search on them if you have trouble finding them and just click on images and you will find a whole slew of trig identities. So one of them is your double angle formula for cosine, which has three different forms. Cosine two theta is equal to two cosine squared x minus one. Now, this is nice because it goes from a cosine squared to a single cosine, which we can do the integration of much easier, except it doesn't match. This is not what we have over there, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is get rid of this one. So I'm gonna move it to the other side. So this becomes cosine two x plus one equals two cosine 
squared x. Still doesn't match, it needs to be a 12, it's currently a six, so just multiply both sides by six, right? So six cosine two x plus six equals 12 cosine squared x. Now it matches, look at that, we can do that substitution. So I can rewrite this, and this is indeed actually equal to the original statement up there, it is six cosine two x, actually I'm not using x as our math, we're using theta, so let's stick with our variables, and then plus six, and then d theta, all right? Now, when I do my u substitution here, I can do this u substitution quite easily. I'm just gonna split this up into two pieces. I'm gonna do the cosine, I'm gonna do the trig function, and I'm gonna do the constant of six here separately as two different integrations. So really what I'm doing is the integration of six cosine of two theta, d theta, plus the integration of six d theta. And the reason why I'm splitting it up like that is because one involves a trig function, the other one's just a constant, which is really easy to do. On this first part here, I'm not going to write it there, I'm going to write it here so it's a little bit obvious where I'm pulling it from. u is equal to 2 theta, which means that du is equal to 2 d theta. Well, I actually have 6 right there, which is 3 times 2. So I can rewrite this as 3 times cosine u du. Well, the integration of cosine is sine, so it's actually 3 sine of u, right? I'll hold off, you know, we can, we can hold off on the plus c, or we can go ahead and write it now. I'm going to go ahead and write it now. I'm going to do c1, because I have a second integration here I'm going to do in a second. And then this is going to be 6 theta, and then plus c sub 2. Well, the variables don't match. Well, that's because I did a u substitution, so let's go back to the correct variable. Or the original variable. I guess they're both correct, but let's go back to the original variable. All right, and then plus six theta, and a constant plus a constant is just a constant. So there you go. So there is my integration from here down to there. All right, and that is the. Uh, oops, I lost my three. Um, that is that integration process. And you can see that doing that substitution made this process a lot simpler for us than starting off with cosine squared. I hope these videos are useful. I hope you find uh, that you're learning something and that it is enriching your daily life, or at the very least that you find these useful in learning how to do integration. All right, take care and let me know if you need additional videos on this topic.